in just a moment. Hey, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Benzinga Morning Coffee, the show where we get to better together as a team, and we have a lot of fun doing it. The purpose of the show, be yourself, be a better trader. That's it. Simple as that. We come one, come all. Four, we have a great core group. For anyone that's new to the show, one hit, smash that like on YouTube, Twitter, and Twitch. Smash the like, join us. But anyone that is new to the show, please understand this is the place to be yourself. I'm in a blank and Metallica t-shirt with a 67 fastback behind me. Okay, we're talking stocks, baby. This week it is Stock City. But please come one, come all, have some fun, join us. If you're on the YouTube stream and you want to get in in the discussion, you got to get in the discussion through Benzinga Pro, the world's most powerful stock market site. I love it. We use it every day. It's going to be core to the show, particularly with our charting on some stocks today. Point being, if you want to get involved with the show, tell us your best thesis, ask us the best questions, and really start a great conversation. You got to join Benzinga Pro. Two-week trial, always free. We don't want your credit card. We don't care. We want you to come have fun and become better traders. So, for anybody that is on the YouTube and maybe seen the show before, again, I was telling our group here on Benzinga Pro, Avon is not with us this week. I am assuming it's a combination of alcohol poisoning and sun poisoning with some chlamydia. We will wait for the confirmation from the doctors. Well, I don't know. I don't know. I, we met at a Slayer concert a long time ago. So, you know, he could have gotten up to some some... Friday night or Thursday night, Florida heavy metal. We don't know. All right. So this week, folks, it is Stock City. Again, we have chock full of stocks that we want to talk about. We got a nice mix. We're going to talk uh, a penny stock. We're going to talk Germany's largest bank, and we're going to talk a biomedical stock right in the middle. Quick follow-up, that biomedical stock was my worst trade ever. I've lost so much money on it, but it's turned, seemed to be turning around, and I need some advice, some help from the crowd to see what I should do. So get in there, smash that like, get in the discussion. Let's start chatting. Let's fire off right away. We always like to open with just some basic news overnight. Well, first off, happy 4th of July, everyone. I'm excited for this weekend. It's going to be a quick three-day weekend. I got some new speakers. If anybody knows who I am, I'm real excited about them speakers. Um, man, they are tasty. But we're going to have a good weekend. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, one news that caught my eye I really, really like. So insure, unemployment insurance claims are the lowest since the start of the pandemic. Now, that's an insurance claim. That's not necessarily a, a, an indication that people are growing back to work in droves, but it is an indication that less people are starting to rely on some assistance in a good way. The economy is opening up. We are hopefully trudging through the last quarter of the pandemic. Uh, hopefully, you know, things don't go absolutely ape off the shelf shit crazy, but I think we, I think we're in good shape. So excited about the unemployment claims going down. That's good news, right? Anybody got anything going on this week? Anything cool? Spence, you got anything cool? Joseph, Gary, Jim, thanks for being here. Gary, again, we had two Gary's. Nice. Well, you guys are, I like it. We got, we're going to take it easy this weekend. Sounds like that's good. Yeah, we, uh, my wife just got back from Hawaii, so uh, she, and then she realized, like, as I did, because we were so occupied with what we were doing, that we were like, oh, yeah. you know, this is 4th of July weekend, uh, <laughs> we, haven't, we haven't really prepared for this, so I was like, okay, well, we can do whatever we want, I don't care. <laughs> it's, it's like, it's, it's kind of wang, uh, wang it this year, you know? I love it. Joseph, it's like going to be one of those fourth weekends where you just go to the supermarket and get a package of hot dogs, and it's like, well, good enough. Good yeah, my shot is done. Yeah, right? <laughs> like, that's it. that's it. That's it. That's all we got. That's cool, man. Well, good. And I hope you're, uh, I hope that trip was awesome, man. Oh, yeah. She, well, I mean, I didn't go. It was my wife. Uh, yeah. With her, yeah. Uh, her mom and, um, you know, a couple of her uh, cousins, sister, girls kind of trip thing. So she had uh, a good, uh, relaxing time there. Right and on. I that's completely beautiful. Forgot, completely forgot about the most important American holiday. <laughs> hey, there's a little secret that there might be an electric guitar version 
of the Spar Spangled Banner to I open believe the Power it. Hour this today. I don't know. I don't know. I, oh, I mean, I'm on the Power not, Hour. Okay. I'll watch yeah, that. exactly. And, you know, I'm not exact. I don't know what electric guitars look like, but maybe I know who's playing it. So we'll see. We'll see. That'll be exciting. That'll so are, be exciting. are you, are you uh, dueling with Neil or something? <laughs> I, Neil took a little vacay. I watch. I, I really, 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 I <laughs> carry like your style. Yeah, I really, guy, really yeah. watch. It. Right? Yeah, exactly. Now, my amp's not exactly loud enough, so we'll see. And, uh, you know, shirt for me is going to be debatable. Might have it off. I don't know. Got a load up on the coffee. Gary, I'm glad to hear you're getting some cookout, man. Absolutely. I'm doing the same thing. I think I'm yeah. doing steak uh, Monday, and I think I'm doing ribs on Sunday. Everybody here is, a, I assume, a, a charcoal person. I'm just getting into the charcoal world. Man, it makes a difference. And, and of course, I'll be drinking my Woodford. Gas versus charcoal on the, on the grills. Man, that charcoal makes a big difference. I was not. Oh, pellet smoker. Jeez. Yeah. I got to like sum up my game already. I was just, I thought I was just getting there. It is a big difference. So cool, man. Well, right on. Glad everyone's going to have a good weekend. Well, let's dive into the stocks. So first and foremost, I think we should smart start with the small cap. Give me a quick second. Make sure we got my, my screen all sharing up. Uh, we are excited to do this. I am excited about this stock as I've had my eye on it for a while. A nice entry point. Folks, give me a quick thumbs up if we can see the screen. Everything looking good. Can we see the chart? Looking good. Thank you. Okay. So this is Visilink Technologies. Long story short, the easiest way to describe Visilink is that you've seen it on the Super Bowl earlier this year. They are a camera company specializing in live video streams. Okay, so they provide a lot of overhead shots. The easiest way to think of it is it, hey, how can I put the world's best HD camera with streaming capabilities in a drone or some other device like that and deliver that image across the world? So a little bit of a downstride right here, but I want to zoom out very, very quickly. Look at this bad boy, right? Okay, so back in the day, this thing had reached some monster heights and there was some decent days here. And this is, we're looking at the dailies here. So we were in, we were above 20 bucks for some time. Now it was trending downward, I get that, but there was a little bit of time where this thing last year, 2020, had some serious days over 20 bucks. Since then, it's gone straight down and leveled out. It had this nice pop right here that was right around the Super Bowl or announcement thereof. And then it fell down and it had this nice cup and handle and it's popped up. Joseph, could not thank you enough. Want to give a great shout out to the entire Zinger Nation, everyone out there for Joseph for helping putting together this chart that is so badass, so awesome, man. Thank you so much. So we got some nice, yeah, right on, brother. So we got some nice things now. I have, here's overall my play. I have averaged into it about 250, and I'm going to sell right around five bucks. I got into this stock early this year and I got in around the 250 level. It was right around, uh, I think I, I got in here and I got in here somewhere about then. maybe. And then I think I averaged down a little bit down here. I don't, I believe in the stock. I don't want to give up in the stock, but I've only seen it coming down downwards. Here's the quick analysis. <clears throat> okay. As we can see here, oh, I better zoom out this way. We're basically on a straight downward trend. All right. From last year, uh, mid last year, all the way straight down, it's just been cruising. Had a nice cup and handle right here, popped right up. And ever since then, it has just really leveled out. Now, what we've noticed three times, thank you again to Joseph, it has tried to close over this trend line of uh, this declining trend line three times recently in the past uh, month or so. All right. Our 500 day moving average is it, it's above that. So we're looking strong. It's building support and it has this multi-year resistance at 329. So essentially we want to get into this 329. Again, I'm averaged at 250. My selling point is going to be anywhere between 475 and five bucks. I'm going to be okay with that. I'll set the limit at five, but if I see 480, I'll probably take it. What do I do now? 
I don't know. I got a little bit of a question. It looks like, it looks like I'm basically going to be in this holding pattern for some time. Joseph, do you have, what are you, is there anything I'm missing here? Do you see I, what I see? Yeah, my beloved uh, 500 day moving average is not on there. That's the uh, support you were talking about in that text. Um, ah. it, it's uh, it, when you turn it on, you'll see it's kind of sharing the same level with the 50 day moving average right now. Uh, but uh, originally when uh, the price that you're trying to get up to, that's where uh, the 500 was kind of uh, pushing it down. It was providing resistance. But now it's gotten underneath the price and it's kind of propping it up, trying to push it up uh, above, you know, past that uh, trend line. So I would watch for uh, a close over that trend line and uh, maybe uh, a confirmation of that, like a second day to make sure that it stays over there. Um, it'll come. It'll, my thought is that ah. once it does, once it does close over that trend line, it'll come up to that uh, 329 multi-year resistance level and probably knock its head on it, come down, trust the yep. trend line, and then go back up and, and through that. So uh, I would say that maybe when the, uh, you get some confirmation of, of, a, of the trend reversal, it's going, it, you know, it goes over that trend line and stays over there. That's probably would be a, a better time to buy. That's to buy. <clears throat> so now, if you're going to push this uh, to, to your to your plan to go to five dollars, that's yeah. that's when I would. I mean, you're already in this, so that's that's good. Exactly. If you're and just I got getting into this, then that would probably be the best time to do it. Would be to buy at at, at the three twenty nine. No, 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 no. I, uh, when, you, when you have a close, uh, uh, maybe two closes over the uh, trend line. That's what I was thinking. I, I think any, I, I think right around 250 to 260 is a good entry point. We, we've seen the peaks of this stock in the 20s not that long ago, ret relatively speaking. Does that speak any volumes to this situation? I know stocks never have to go back to where they were, but do we have a situation here where it's like, hey, it's already hit this position before. I know it's sub three bucks right now, but it's not crazy to hit $5, even though it feels like it hasn't been there for a long time. See what I'm saying? It, it, do I have a better probability of reaching that $5 mark based on some prior highs of the stock? I would, uh, I would defer to the news and the financials at that point to see if there's any, uh, you know, real strength in this company to, to get at that level. Because, uh, you know, the technicals can only go so far. And uh, at that point, when they go as far as you think they can, like here, I, I say the, the, the best entry would be to, to uh, you know, pass the or over the trend line. Uh, at that point, I don't know for sure how high this could go. I'd have to refer to like other levels uh, right. in the past but you know if i want to get if i want to uh you know I, there's an analogy uh you know the, the the technicals are like the road map but the fundamentals are the gas in the tank and that'll tell you how far it's going to go i like how that far it should go i like that. uh so if there if there's like no news or if this uh if this isn't getting contracts uh i imagine they would if they're the uh the video uh they're, they're one of the camera right. companies. yeah okay so I'd imagine they'd be getting more work, but when you see that it's yeah. uh, it's been at, uh, it's a higher price in the past, it's because it's been heavily diluted. Uh, they've, mm. they've offered and offered, so you kind of wonder: is do they still need to raise cash? What do the fundamentals look like? That's what I would defer to at this point to see like how far uh, a company like this could go, uh, and just seeing how how diluted it's been over what, the past seven years. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it makes you wonder. It makes you wonder. I, I mean, it doesn't make me wonder if it's going to ever get to twenty. It probably won't. But five, no. five, <clears throat> five is definitely within sight as long as they don't dilute it anymore. Awesome. I agree completely, Gary. I want to get to your question in a moment. Thanks for that. I could not agree more. I, I don't think twenty is realistic, and if it would, it would be years off because I think the fundamental. I think the company needs to prove its worth. I need. I need some solid fundamentals to to attract the the company's eye. Uh, or excuse me, the market's eye. Um, before I get to Gary's question, just to tag on to that, when we see companies having this downward trend, right, and it's butt up against uh, you know this this line three times, tried to close over it, couldn't it? Uh, all the moving averages seem to be treading downward, but there is some sort of uh, historical catalyst for the company <clears throat> has had large contracts does do does provide a very uh solves a good problem for the world 
obviously we're, we're a visual dominant society. You know, we love sport. We have to see it. We want sports. We want to see these things. Uh, just think about how large your average screen is at concerts now. So anybody, I mean, seriously, guys, like you can literally see the singer's face from all the way in the back. That was not really possible a long time ago. But OK, right here, man, this was starting in May, really kind of uh, early May. We've had this like little turnaround and it's starting to butt up again. Is this does this ever catch your eye when you're reading the technicals is like, hey, it looks like it's trying to form a new base and, and, and essentially turn itself around and get some momentum in the positive direction. Um, so, there, yeah, that there, was kind of a double bottom there, but I was uh, I have my uh, moving averages on. So there's I see the 200 uh, providing that support for that uh, level there and as well as that single green wick that's back over in uh, the beginning of, beginning of March, the 200 uh, supported all that. So you can see there, like it had some days where it closed underneath it, but it didn't uh, last long. It went right back up, came right, down, these are days. right back cool. up. So it's, there's, there's support there. You also see, uh, you got the 50, I'm sorry, they got the 20 cross and the 50, that's a silver cross. Yep, right there. Uh, sorry about forgetting the so, motion then. No, it's okay. So you got, you, you know, so you got uh, three moving averages that are starting to show kind of like a reversal, if not an upward trend. And the only one that's da looking down is the 500. So that's kind of like the last, the last one to for every, all of these to get over, um, you know, you got the, so the 20 is over the 50. If that stays over, that's great. If the 50 can get over the 500, that's good. The 50 is already over to the 200, so there's not going to be a golden cross. But if the 200 crosses the 500, then that's the first time in yeah, quite ever. some a, a dude, <laughs> a long so, time, guys. Yeah. Actually, that's a great point right here. This little blue line represents our 50 day moving average. And this thick red line, orangish red line, represents our 500-day moving average. And just with yesterday's positive close, that's a daily candle. We look like we're pretty much right there. We're, or, or the 50 as converging exactly with the 500. No, I, I don't know of any significant uh, moments that represents like a golden cross or a silver cross. But, I mean, that's at least a good sign that over time this thing's starting to, to swing around. Gary, let me answer your question. Two parts to that. Gary had a great question. He was like, Mike, why, why do you have such conviction in this stock? Number one, I guess I have three. Number one, I am not a penny stock trader. I fucking hate penny stocks. I hate penny stocks because they're cheap for a reason. And I really, I, I, I talked to so many beginning traders that, hey, you know, what are the best penny stocks? And I just wish more people understood the risk with the penny stock. Number one, Penny stocks, again, cheap for a reason. But number two, this market is moving on headlines. This market is moving with news. The chances of getting a penny stock to, to you know, find that, that true golden egg and have that big catalyst and everything be set up for it, I think are, is a little rare. So I, I tend to want to deploy my capital a little more uh, higher probability place. Number two, it has been there in the past. So I love finding stocks that are essentially a value play. And I'm not lumping Visalink in there, but that was my thesis with Ford. Hey, there's no reason Ford Motor Company should have been five bucks. That was absolutely ludicrous. I am going to triple and quadruple down on this bad boy. I'm going to write it up. 15 seems to be really kind of a fair value. That was a good play. That worked off. Um, so I, does this thing deserve to be two dollars from where it was? No, I think it really is closer to that four or five dollar mark. I think it was a little undervalued. I think it's going to be a better play. Lastly, Gary, I I like the the problem the business is solving. We are, gosh, guys, let's think about a kind of a, a situation. Kind of a, an example is with the amount of movies coming out on streaming device more and more people do prefer to sit on their couch we are struggling guys college football particularly here in in michigan is is stronger than like probably any religion but it's not so easy to get people into the seats people love the concept of saturday i can sit in my favorite couch I have the bathroom right there. I have my favorite food, my favorite drink. I don't have to get up at 5 a.m. and log all this crap up to Ann Arbor, East Lansing, sit in the rain, and then go to a game, right? I think I, I hope, I think we all kind of get onto that board. 
we want to see in, in high definition uh, cameras are going nowhere. It's just going to be closer and closer to the action and sports are going nowhere. And we, we see with uh, sports gambling and the demand thereof, people love sports. The, the, the pandemic did not ruin that for anybody, maybe slowed it down, but it didn't ruin it. So I like the idea of a high definition camera company solving that image problem of getting the best images to users on their couch. Uh, across the globe. I think there's some value there. I like that. It, and I love companies with long-term implementations. That's something that needs to be a flash in the pan, like a biotech, where you have no idea where it's going to go. But a company that could be around for a while, it's a simple play like that, Gary. I hope I answered that question well enough, a little bit of a dialogue or a monologue here. I, cool. my, my question would be, and uh, to follow up with his, would, would be like, uh, how does this compare to a company like Axon, the other company? Mm. Good question. Do you know the ticker by any chance? I don't know that they're publicly traded. Uh, oh. me, I just know about the camera company because they're the ones I was seeing a whole bunch. Yeah, okay, Axon. I, I, I think they are. Uh, it's uh, AXON. Let me double check to make sure this is the correct one. Uh, no, that's uh, those are energy weapons. That's not it. Energy weapons. So, but Jeez, it's really pricey. I can't imagine alive. that this would be. I don't. I don't think that they're publicly traded. To be honest. Um, I'd have to look into that, but I just do, do know of that company. That's the other big camera, uh, Great. camera up for the, for the, uh, you know, police units. Bring it uh, on. I can't buy them. I can buy Visalink. Yeah. So, I mean, I just want to know like how is, is uh, that private company going to take the, uh, you know, eat away at the space of this public company. Mm. Do you think mm. it's, it's the only thing, I mean, they're, they're, you know, it doesn't have to be. Public. Great question. Great question. Um, who knows? I, you know, that's, that's, yeah, there's definitely still gonna be some competition there, but, if anything, that's a good thing. You know, is that is that kind of like two sides of the same coin where one may not dominate the dominate the other, but both are going to kind of grow. And and overall, I, look, I'm just looking to flip this thing and move on. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm not. You know, I don't need to fight for this thing um, again to the end of time. I, I just want to let it go. And I mean, again, man, it's it it has. That wasn't that long ago. It it wants to get up there. We've seen these monster candles too. Look at this, man. Mm -hmm. That's a daily right there. That's a, that's insane. If I can if I can get one spike above that, hit the five bucks, I'm out of here. I just need one headline, one contract. They've already nailed the Super Bowl. Uh, there's a lot more to come. Who knows? Who I, knows? I, I know your target's five dollars. Uh, do you have you looked at the levels at uh, four fifty and four? I, I exactly. Man. I really anywhere between then I'll set the limit at, at five bucks. I'll for okay. sure sell at 475, 450 with, you know, a 250 average is like, why not? You know yeah. what I mean? Get it off the books, move the capital into something else. Yep. Cool. Fair. Nice. So folks, a long story short, it's a cheap stock. It's a penny stock. It has some, uh, it had some prior momentum. It has the right headlines already. Um, we'll have to do a little bit deeper on some financials. Actually, let me do a quick check of the cash flow. Let me see if they cash flow. Net change of cash flow is not bad, man. The last three months, that is not bad at all. And that is a nice pop. So that is a good sign for me. Yeah. And I am a cash flow king, man. I, I think that is trumps everything. Uh, ooh, but net proceeds to sale of common stocks yeah. was the majority of that. So that is they why. an offering. Yep, that makes sense. They got extra cash on the books. Okay, otherwise they're kind of losing some cash flow, but not too bad. Uh, we'll stick with it. Uh, good, I, I, a good story, cheap, long-term play. I think the value is here. I would not buy at a, uh, a high 274. Uh, I think, now wait, last question about this. Will having this, and I'm using my averages up here to the right, the blue, this is a moving average triple. You can hit the indicators, just type in moving averages, and then you will see triple right here. And it, Benzinga Pro automatically take care, take care of three of them. I've adjusted to the 20, the 50, and the 200. So last question of our 50 is going to move above, and I have my 500 right here. Is that uh, a green day ahead today if you were thinking of getting in, but you're looking for the right price? Maybe today's not the day, Joseph your technical analysis opinion so if i'm going to buy this stock i want to make sure that the the trend is going to continue and i uh, i'm sorry not this downtrend but i'm going to that this uptrend that it's got going on right now i want to make sure yeah. that, that continues and it breaks through the downtrend line 
I want a confirmation of that first. And that might mean that you're not going to uh, get a better price. Yeah. So I would, watch for the, I would watch for the 50 to, to provide, continue providing that support as it moves over the, the trend line. Because I don't know that the 200 will, will uh, be high up enough. If it goes down to the 200, people might get scared. Uh, I think the 50 is going to carry it through the other side of the trend line. That's just my opinion. But I would want to wait for it to get on the other side of the trend line before I started buying. Got it. Okay. And folks, even that's not too bad. That's a, that is a, if you, if you can get in, say you get in at 350 and you sell at 450 and you take a conservative trade, that's a 33% increase and, and give that maybe six to nine months. That's not bad, but that, that's not crazy. As a form of advisor, I would kill for that um, for my clients. And hey, Gary, thanks for uh, piping in. He, Joseph, he completely agrees with you. I think that's awesome way for some price movement. Awesome. So there's a cheap one. There's a value play for everybody's value in terms of price. I think that's cool. Well, let's, let's see how it plays out. Sound good? Any other questions? Let's move on. So another stock I've had some eyes on for a while. I think it, it's the same, same play. What is a, it? I, I guess it's as simple as like, well, this is value, but what is a company that has a large prior track record of some decent price that seemingly looks undervalued right now? Deutsche Bank to me screams that example. Overall, the biggest thesis I have with banks is they are made of money. I'm not sure if anybody here has worked for a bank, but if you've ever had a bank manager, executive manager, they're effing nuts. Every like, guys, it's not, it is incomparable. You're, you're not selling shoes here. There's no, there's no finesse. There's no passion to it. Like, you know, obviously you have to sell a lot of cars, but there are engineers that love cars that, that are keep there to produce the product. Banking, there is no emotion. There's no feeling. It's all about the money. They have to make money. It's insane. So point being banks, are always focused on the bottom line. And I think more so than most industries. I know that sounds like, well, how do you say that? But trust me, just go work for a bank. You'll have a boot so far up your ass. You, you, you will taste leather for weeks. So, oh yeah. We have a nice downward trend too. Let's break down the chart. First and foremost, we have, uh, again, props to Joseph for helping us out here. We want to look at this high from January 2017 of 20 bucks, 94 cents. That is what I like. That's what captures my attention. Okay, it's been there before and it's a bank. So I know they're gonna be like, why should we not be 20 bucks? And believe me, people that work for banks are also greedy, meaning executive teams are gonna want that stock price as high as they can for their third home. Okay, come and dip and down. A majority of this was really bad press and bad plays, a lot of compliance issues. That's great. There's nothing better in my opinion for uh, compliance and regulatory issues because the, the regulatory system is gonna come so hard down on an institution like the bank that all those bad actors have to get cleared away very quickly as soon as it comes to light. So I'm looking at this coming around. We had this night, we had of course the classic, this is the pandemic dip. And ever since then folks, this is, I bought in before I was averaging, uh, gosh, I, I I don't remember exactly the price I got in. It was right around 10, I think, spiked right up before the pandemic. And then obviously took a punch, but it looked just moving right up. Now, well, let's look at our channel. This is what we're talking about. Previously, we had a nice channel here where the stock really wanted to get into. And should I zoom out a little bit more, Joseph, would that help? Where, you know, there was some serious time in there. Fast forwarding today, we've just butt up against this $15 mark and then came promptly right down. A little interesting to me. Where do we go from here? My opinion, it's as simple as this. We have earnings coming up at the end of the month. I think at 1305, it's cheap. I think it's gonna wanna hit at least that $15 mark. My price target is gonna be in this channel. I don't know if I'll sell all my shares uh, at you know say 18 bucks or closer to 20 but i'm definitely going to sell at least half and if i hit 20 i'm going to sell a decent amount say i see the same thing i see a big company got cheap working its way back up it looks like we got to get over this technical level am i missing anything there what do you guys think uh 
you're on the weekly, so we uh, I'll list them to the daily. Yeah, so we can if you want to see uh, like what's happening each day, that give us a better idea. And uh, you know, you had me uh, do a little uh, charting on this one, and one of the things that I noticed uh, that I thought was super interesting was that whenever the uh, 20 day moving average crosses uh, the 50 day uh, to the downside, and then uh, the price touches the 20 MA after that happens, the price goes right up and, uh, and it rallies for you know weeks or months at a time until it finds a new high. So that happened on October 5th, on February 12th, on April 27th, and it looks like it's about to happen again. Aha, uh-huh. I see, I see, I see. Yeah. So if you want to, if you want to show everybody, if you go to October 5th, you can see where as soon as the 20, uh, the price touches the 20, it goes up and it rallies all the way uh, to uh, December 4th is when the, the top is because it, it never closes below the 20. You have some, you have, it gets close three times in uh, toward the uh, beginning of November, but it never uh, goes below the 20. This keeps on going and it finds a new high comes down. Uh, you see it touch the 20 there, but we don't have that cross. So it doesn't make new highs It double tops comes down. And then on February 12th, after the 20 has crossed the 50 again to the downside, and then the price touches the 20, you make new highs. So you can, mm. see, you can see that on February 12th, come down, uh, it comes down again, goes through the 50 just a little bit, touches the price on April 27th, makes new highs. And now here we are with the 20 coming down through the 50 again, and we're almost, uh, the 20 is almost gonna touch the uh, price, probably maybe uh, next week, possibly. And if that happens, we could see this making new highs into that channel. If it gets into that channel, does that signify anything? Is that hopefully representing a, 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 a level the stock has been trying to hit for so long that it could represent a new base, a new, a new low? I think, yeah, I think that when it gets into that channel, it's going to just do that same sideways action you had for what, yep. since uh, March, uh, January 2016 to March 2018. Oh, okay. I mean, there's that there's that whole sideways action. Yeah, it fell out of the channel for you know maybe about a, a you know half a year or so, but uh, th- that channel is really strong. You got like over two years of movement in there. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. Let me back so, out a little bit so we can all see. If it together. if it gets up into that channel, I'd expect it to dance around there before ah. uh, either making the move to the upside or downside, depending on what you know the situation is at the time. I see what you're saying, folks. So that looks like a decent swing trade that could provide some tasty gains some tasty fruits for months meaning hey this is not something that you're going to want to uh bank on but if we can get into this channel and we can get into these banks if you can get a couple nice swings like this and then sell you know buy the dip sell the rip as soon as you hit a high boom and it looks like you would set a uh, a sell limit anytime it hits 20 bucks and you would set a buy limit maybe every time it's uh, right around here. It's 16, called 1675. That's not bad, man. I'll take that all day. So we, but I mean, does everybody like see this? <laughs> this is great, guys. Like this is exactly what I'm talking about. This is there's this is too low for a a, a company like Germany's largest bank. It's just not. It's just the the that's too low. That's too low. And what they want to do, the, the way they're going to be hell bent on moving this company forward. And again, with most of this being bad press, all those people get cleared out, man. They, and I love the management shakeup. This is, this is going to be good. I think this is going to be really good. So we got to get a little bit closer here into, we have what we have, this is the 20 and the 50. So yeah, we have that 20 dip in the below the 50. We got to get a little bit above this and we could be looking out. Do you want to draw a line, a trend line like this and just follow this up and, and try to get a time frame? So that would be, I don't know if we have a time roughly, let's see, when do we think that would be? Maybe August or so, September, we should be getting into that channel. If we, Oh, well, depending on uh, earnings at the, the end earnings, of the month, yeah. right? Yeah, so it could be uh, it could be the end of next month that we see it in there. It depends on how earnings go. For, I'd imagine earnings would be would be fine. They're good. Uh, 
Yes, dude. <laughs> I can almost think that's I'm an understatement. Yeah. <laughs> I think our things are gonna be just fine. They handled the pandemic so much better than we did. They really did. Um, God, well, do you just... remember? Do you remember when the pandemic uh, or when the the spy reversed? Like what day it was? Because I think this is a little bit interesting. Just the twentieth. It was, it was or, March 23rd. 23rd, okay. March 23rd was the bottom, but for Deutsche Bank, the bottom was March 16th. So That's week, interesting. A whole week, they were, uh, they were already reversing before the SPY was. That's very interesting, Joseph. That is very interesting. I just I love it. it. I don't know if it warrants any, uh, any further investigation, but uh, the, I think that maybe if we look back at banks, we'll probably see the same thing. The bank's reversing ahead of uh, the rest of the market, maybe. Just a thought. I'm going to throw out B of A. Let's take a look at them. I mean, we jump to Benzinga Pro. I can use my compare. That means I'm going to add another company. And we just need some B of A stock, uh, BAC, Bank of America. Now, let's see here. B of A. Let me make this a little brighter for everybody. Just go to settings. Nope. To March 23rd for, the, for Bank of America. Ah! <laughs> There you go, folks. Uh, you, well, surprise there. Yeah, right there on the 23rd. And they beat it by oh, almost a full week. Uh, and it has outperformed. Uh, oh, well, it was outperforming B of A for, yeah, at least today. It's outperforming by quite, quite a wide margin. I like it. I like it a lot. It's going to come back to there's no way this company was worth $5 a share. They're too fucking big. Excuse my language. I'm working on it. Thank you, everyone. And the reminders uh, behind the scenes, um, but even then, man, even even in this 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 group right here, this channel, when it even at seven dollars, it's like there's no way this is worth seven bucks. Of course, the market's like, yeah, you're probably right. Popped right up. This is probably around earnings as well. Went right up to ten, little dip, and it's just been working its way up. As Gary said in the chat, making higher highs, reversing, uh, avoiding lower lows. It's just awesome. It's about a, and Jim's got a great point in the chat too. It's about its competitors in their space and earnings. So we all agree. We think earnings are going to be very good. It's competitors. It, it's it's kind of one of those things where I'm not trying to beat the market. Or I'm not trying to beat any competitor. I'm not. I for the space that it's in, I just want to take the gains. I don't, you know, like. The, uh, the, let's just take the American auto industry, for example, do I, is, is it a coin flip between Ford and GM and, and Toyota and so forth? Okay. I just think that that sector is going to do well. So I just want to find a company that I think I can make the most money with. I don't really care. You know, I, I don't need to play these stocks um, against each other. And I don't mean that in a bad way, Jim. I mean that in a very good way. I mean, man, just, Let's just take the money and ride. You know what I mean? Let's. Uh... I can add a little commentary because we did have those uh, bank uh, stress tests last week, uh, and they passed. So that's good. The expectation now is that there's going to be some buybacks of shares and increased dividends. Uh, music to my ears, man. Music so, absolutely to my ears. Yeah, that's that's the expectation uh, right now. I you know I know that uh, for J P Morgan, I know that's most likely going to be the case. I like JP Morgan. I actually hold them. Um, yeah. Great company. So yeah, I, I don't know how many other banks are going to do that. I'd imagine that it's going to be a common theme that uh, the banks are able to show that strength and uh, that would, you know, just make them stronger. If they're able to buy back, increase dividends and really gets the interest going. I, I think that's what might happen. I like it. I like it a lot, especially the buybacks. This might be the right time, right place. Um, probably going to want to flex some money. Uh, also, long story short, I, I, I am definitely a buyer at 13 bucks. I think that is an absolute no brainer. I definitely see it wanting to push back up to 20 or 15, excuse me. It looks like pretty much every time it, it does hit the, that little lull, anything around the low, it, it wants to push up relatively soon. It's going to puts around and it's going to move its way up. And that looks like exactly what we have. And nice gap up right here, man. I would take that all day. Mm -hmm. Looks like this was filled in. Looks like it's going to putt. It's, it's staying right above that trend line. Man, uh, why wouldn't it go from 13 to 15? I mean, Guys that's, me. well, because the thing is, is that when, like I was saying, when it, when it crosses yep. the, the 20, crosses the 50 to the downside and the price touches the 20, it makes a new high. Well, the high is now 
13, uh, I'm sorry, 1534 from that, uh, that recent uh, day on yeah. May, uh, in May. So we'll make new highs into this channel if this pattern does hold up. I have no doubt about that. It will go into that channel if this, if this pattern is to be repeated. What, so, that's a 20% 20, 20 pop, hopefully by the end of the month? Yeah, the price is going to um, not pop in one day, but it's no, gonna, no, you're yeah. right. I, wrong word. Wrong word. Okay, so, 20%. <laughs> sorry, sorry. So yeah, it's gonna it's gonna touch that uh, that twenty, and then the price is gonna go. All right, that was the move. I'd rather have a twenty touch me than a fifty. So let's go ahead and, and get uh, get a higher. Uh, so now it's going up to. Uh, it's gonna it's gonna probably uh, you know have these days where it just kind of goes up and down a bit. But if you look at the past uh, days before it got up to the twenty. It kind of got a little boost up to reach it, to grab for it. So there might be a pop, a small pop coming uh, in the, the next, you know, maybe next week uh, to, yeah. to go up and grab for that, uh, that 20 before it takes off. So that could be something to watch for. Uh, maybe this, is, this is a really good level. I know we discussed that, uh, you know, right here is where we should uh, get in. And I said I'd like it a little bit better if it was under 13 just to manage the downside, right. if any. Right. So, I, that's a valid, valid, valid point. Uh, Man, yeah, I could totally see that, particularly if it wants to fill in this last bit of the gap. You know, yeah, around 1250, I think is fine. I, and folks, and, and the, the answer to that question there is simply, how, how much are you, are you planning, if you're, if you're going to buy, how much are you planning to put in? Uh, if you're going to, you know, if you're in, in, in a very good way, if you want to just, you know, I just want to take the 20%, you don't have to fret about the, the difference in 15 cents or, or so forth. If you need a great price action, you, you have a very specific plan, you're, you know, a little more strategic in a very good way, then yeah, I, I think you're, check the price. Um, man, if you're just trying to get in and get out, Joseph, what do you think? I, I think 13 is fair. Yeah, but this is, this is a good price for this stock. Guys, like, why? I, somebody tell me why Jody's lunch of steak should be 13 <laughs> It just doesn't make any sense. I think so I'm that, okay with it. I mean, I just think this company, this bank, just gets a lot of bad PR. Yes, dude. Trust me, they do. And I, I can't. The, the regulatory pressures are so huge in banks that the executives that want to keep their jobs forever want to weed out and remove those bad actors as quickly as possible because they don't want the regulatory guys reading breathing down their neck and they just want to make money and move on that 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 is the purpose of the bank is to make money that's it okay great so folks we got two good winners now we're going to do a quick follow-up on my worst trade ever from a long time ago hopefully we're getting some positive we're going to kind of flip the script to it a little bit different of a chart here ptct it's basically a biotech company long story short um they have some drugs on, on the line. We can get it to them in a second. I can jump, I mean, my details tool, the two day looks much better, thank God. Um, they are, I'm gonna quickly go down here to a quick review. They're a global biopharmaceutical company focused on the discovery of um, drugs, basically anything it can solve with RNA. So it is a very topical thing and I like the company. That's the more or less why I bought it. I liked the story. Uh, there was some analyst ratings ahead of my purchase, um, and I basically missed the boat. I just, I just misplayed it. I, I let greed overcome me instead of being rational, and I, I've lost about well, half of my money, and it's slowly coming back. Okay. Um, I am averaged in, I think, at around 66. I have a sell limit at 77.50. I have a long way to go. I should have sold a long time ago. I don't have an exorbitant amount of capital into the stock. Therefore, I'm kind of letting it play out. And it's out of pure arrogance and stubbornness to keep the stock. Otherwise, you should sell. Everyone's kind of got their golden rule. The uh, chief investment officer for Raymond James, his, his golden rule, his 20% loss on all of his stocks. Very, very wealthy guy. I used to work for Raymond James as an advisor. That's how I know that number. Um, I did not listen to that rule. And I'm now kind of stuck with it. But again, I'm, what I am seeing is I saw this long downward, let me zoom out a little bit, basically a very, very long downward trend where even the, it, it never stuck one way or the other. It, every time I thought it would be low, it went right back up. I never got any consistency. And then out of nowhere, at the beginning of May, 
It started to hold steady and it's been pushing up ever since then. I needed these uh, past positive two days. I still don't see um, my parabolic stop and reversals reversing into a new trend. However, I am pushing up right along the mean for the stock, my Bollinger Bands is 20 day. That's what I'm looking for. I don't think it's overextended. I don't think it's fallen down. I think I'm getting a fair price. I'm going to hold steady with the, uh, I, I think I'll at least break even. I don't know when that's going to happen. Guys, what do you think? Anybody got any thoughts? We've kind of touched on this one before. Biomedical looks like it's leveling out. What do you guys see? Am I wrong? Am I crazy? What do you think? Anybody uh, with a mic want to say anything? Oh, yeah, I know that's tough. I, uh, it's tough. Because <laughs> uh, I did chart this one too. I, but Mike, did you get my most recent email with all of these charts that I did that had a whole bunch of levels in it? Not PTCT. Okay, yeah. I, yeah, I sent one last night that had a whole bunch of stuff. Um, this, one, this one is probably, the, of the three that you mentioned, this one's probably the scariest. God damn it. <laughs> All right, but but it, what's what's nice is that I mean I don't know if you want to uh, just go off uh, what my uh, my description because I, I I drew all these trend lines and and levels and stuff for uh, PC uh, PTCT. Uh, basically, this one has gotten over the the trend line. Remember the the VISL trend line I was talking about and how it needs to get over that and it's going to yes. knock its head and yeah then come down and retest the trend line before it goes back up. This actually happened with this one. So that's that's interesting. So it, there is some hope there. Um, now, how I would draw this, uh, yeah. well, I, how I draw drew the trend line is I started on January eighth, uh, the top there, and I drew it uh, down through uh, February eighth and uh, March sixteenth, and just make sure that those all touch as you uh, keep going down through the current price. And and what was in March? What was that? Uh, March sixteenth. Uh, so yeah, just make sure that those all, yeah, all those touch there, the February, the January, and the March, and just keep on drawing it straight through. Ah, uh, got it. And you'll okay. see how we, uh, we've we closed over and- um, Aha! Yeah, it, that, that's about, that's that's okay. I mean, we uh, on my chart, I can see how uh, the uh, the green candle before the one that we have now, uh, that, that big one, touched the trend line. Yep, I got you. Bounced off that. because So that's what, that's what we're looking for with BISL. It's going to close over the trend line. It's going to come up and it's going to uh, touch the, uh, the recent high, which was uh, 4516 on, Gen on June 17th. And then it's going to come start making its way down and it's going to test the trend line. It's done that a couple of times. Uh, and then it got a huge boost that yeah. uh, pushed it over the 20 uh, moving average. And yeah. now it looks like it's headed towards uh, the 4516 again to retest that. Now, if it cannot uh, get over 4516, this is my opinion. If it cannot get over 4516, I think that there's going to be some more downside. God, okay, I can deal with that. And, and, and if it does break through it, then it's got an uphill battle. You have the 500 day moving average in front of it. You have uh, the 50, the 50 ish, 50, 26 ish level in front of it. You have the 200 in front of it. You have 55. There's a lot of levels that this thing needs to get past on its way back up to over 60. Yeah. I'll be locked in for a while when I. So yeah, this is. I mean, unless unless they have some really good news, because I know they have like a, a they have something in the pipeline right now that they're they're working on. They sure do. So they sure uh, do. Depending on how that goes, that could really significantly move it up. But with all these uh, levels and these re uh, moving average resistances, it's it's got a lot of uh, <clears throat> a lot of uh, uh, work ahead of it. It did have a silver cross on. Uh, uh, like June 23rd, 24th. Um, so that's, you know, that that's helpful. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's, you know, that it got uh, that movement, uh, but you did have uh, the death cross that had, you know, led to this yep. downside yep. action that happened yep. back in uh, April uh, that just uh, completely, you know, smacked the, lived the living hell out of yep. it. Exactly. Yeah. I knew that it just it fell right away. Yeah. But uh, you know, I'm not saying that this is this is bad. It's just that this one, if if you want it to go up, it's got a lot of uh, levels it needs to cross. It needs to have some really good news, really good reports. Something, something needs to uh, keep this thing going because it has got a lot of uh, overhead, a lot of a lot of uh, uh, levels to get through on the upside. Absolutely, I couldn't agree more. 
Um, and Gary, great point. Yeah, it looks like it, it, we got a great um, comment in the chat. Thanks again. So uh, he's, he's right. We do right. Even then right now, it's not, you, you might have a quick 20, 10% uh, swing right there. That's not a ton of money, but it might be safe. I, it, it, look, I, I think there is speaking of news. Let's talk about this. I think there is some potential for more upside than downside. I think I, if anything, I think it is going to level out here. Um, around that part uh, around its current price and i think it's going to i think it's going to want to stick around here uh, yeah if they can get above 45 it'll probably get a smooth sail into the 50s um, probably the low 50s what i do like is i've been following this forever and what i've done and i encourage everybody to do this jump to benzinga pro start your trial if you don't have one put the stocks that you have the most questions about on a watch list and then filter a watch list buy those stocks. So I have a news feed here. I have uh, three sources and then I have a watch list. It's called Rao. I don't know why I named it my last name. There's some stock here. I have my eyes on the most, but I've labeled this a tab called let's sell because I want to desperately get rid of these. And anytime a news story comes across the wire, I get a little alert and I've had PTC for a while coming across that. Let me jump back to the stock itself, jump to the news tab within the details tool. And what they're doing is presenting, they've been on a absolute um, tear of presenting at conferences, not only investor conferences, but also uh, biomedical conferences. To me, that screams good news. They know something that's coming. The next thing I want to do is check for SEC filing, see if there's any recent insider bias. But my point is companies will not spend extra money on a presenting at a conference unless they knew some good news was coming because those conferences are very expensive. Why would I want to waste that money? There's no point as a management decision to expending that capital on basically smoke and mirrors for doing absolutely nothing. So I do think they have some good news coming. I do think that they definitely the drugs they have in play are going to be uh, topical in, in the very near future. The yeah. price action, I see a leveling off. I, I, I think we have a couple more good good signs than bad signs and then again they, i'm looking my most their, recent in their their financials don't look the greatest to me they no. have not had a, a a good earnings report in a long time i agree with that so I that's that's agree. another thing that's that's kind of scary to me and that's why i'm saying like this thing does need some it needs a break it needs a, it needs some really good news to, to uh, come out of their uh their conferences or their uh filings yeah like you said or, or there, uh, if there's like a, a potential um, uh, FDA uh, approval looming uh, for them, I don't, I don't know. Uh, yeah, they, the, had, they had a treatment for Japan. That was that was a, a pop. Not uh, bad. When did that happen? June 23rd. So if you go yep. to June 23rd, yep. um, that was that kind of helped it stay over. Yep. Uh, it wasn't it wasn't the best day, but I think maybe the next day is when it, it got the news. Uh, it depends on what time that was. Anyway, um, the, uh, the yeah the company doesn't yeah, have the greatest. Shit. The company doesn't have the greatest financials right now, and that's the big scary thing for me too. But if they do have uh, a product coming out that they are going to be able to market uh, relatively quickly, that's that's good news. Uh, I just hope they don't have to raise again, uh, raise more cash again, because they they spend oh, it like crazy. I know. This is basically, folks. It's it's. I'm looking at the press releases, and Gary, we're going to jump to uh, DIDI here in just a moment. I, it's just been a, a stream of. A little bit of a PR campaign. I think they have what it's coming for, hopefully. So that's all the play is. I think it's going to level out, and hopefully it hits that that uh, 45 to um, 45 level to shoot up to 50, and I'm stuck in for a while. We got a great comment in the chat. Something's going on with DIDI. What? Oh wow! <laughs> this is wow. Uh, this is wow. The, uh, uh, hold on a second. This what like, the hell is this, man? Ooh, this, this was a, uh, um, uh, a company that uh, Kramer recommended. He, I think he said something <laughs> like, uh, uh, you know, get as much as you can of this IPO, which you should never do. Yep. Um, so, yeah. So I guess some people they maybe <laughs> just got caught in this thing pretty badly. Uh, it's, it's probably it's a good, it looks like it's a good long term hold. But if you're trading this, then you're probably not happy. Oh God, yeah, you're smoked, man. That sucks. Jeez. 
this was a, this was compared to something like it's the, the the Uber of China. So that's what this is. This is the Uber of China. Um, Mobile mobility technology platform. Yep. Yeah. 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 Okay. Shared mobility solutions, electric mobility, autonomous driving. I like everything it says on paper. I hate every company out of China to uh, burn forever. I, I just can't. I don't trust them, and I don't just don't like them. So uh, but the reason for probably this uh, big red candle, or the, rig, the huge dip that we just got, uh, there's a right. little news article, yeah, about uh, there's, there's being re the cybersecurity uh, review for the, by the Chinese government. Yeah, that's probably not good. <laughs> whenever, yeah. whenever the Chinese government says you can't do business because we want to check you out, that's never good. That is not good. That is not good. You are firmly in their grips. And folks, that's why anybody out there, you got to have pro because you needed that headline at 734 in the morning. You needed that to avoid losing your butt uh, on this bad boy. Yikes. Yeah, so this thing was priced at $14 a share a few days yep. ago. Uh, you might actually get the IPO price soon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, you probably are, man. Jeez, you just gave up a lot of gains. Oh, that's just, man, that stinks. Um, yeah, it's not going anywhere. We only have a couple minutes left before we're going to jump to pre-market prep. I love that show. Can't wait to hear what those guys have in store for Friday. It's going to be a good show. It's going to be a, a good end of the week for us all. Uh, man, I hate to see, um, I hate to see us going out on a bad note with DDI though. That, that is. Yeah. Thanks Gary. <laughs> Yeah. No, that's okay, Karen. I'm glad you had it. Oh, Gary, you're great, dude. Thank you. Yeah, brother. Trust me. You are the man. Yeah, and there it is. There's the news coming out as well. 7.46 a.m. Uh, yep. Mm, yeah, my God. Yep. Oh, this is our follow-up uh, on, the, on the partner news. Jeez, oh, Pete. So that's not too bad. Um, well, that's not good for them at no, all. I, I do appreciate this, Gary. This is going to give me some some stuff to talk about in the, uh, this morning. It's this is this is just you know this is just fun to watch sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Nice. No, we do. We are following up on Reed next week as we're marching closer to the August earnings, which we are all excited about. If you've been following the show for a bit, so Reed's going to be a good one. I only have about a minute or two left. Uh, maybe we can take a quick look at Reed. Gary, you sold that at 109, huh? Oh, that's interesting. Oh, and it's had a nice little pop. I, this is definitely a stock I am not worried about long term uh, or any uh, by any changes in price. I'm not freaked out about it because I'm I'm on this relentless march towards um, the August earnings, and I I've, I'm right at the same price. I'm at a buck still. Totally fine. Not too surprised. So, God bless, man. Hopefully that one turns out well. That's going to be an interesting one. Happy yeah. fourth to you too, Gary. Have a great long weekend. Hope to see you too next week, man. Happy right fourth, on. Gary. Right on. Cool. So did we figure out what's everybody grilling? I'm sticking with ribs and, and steak. I think that's going to be it's, my go-to. It's either going to be a brisket or a pork butt that I'm smoking. Oh, go with the butt, man. Oh, my God. No, I, I, pork butt is, is so underrated. It's so good. It's so good. And brisket, I, I think you can go to places and get brisket. If you want to take, you know, the reins by your hands, I, I would be totally into the pork pie. That's fine with me. Cool. Uh, oh, I guess I hope I did. I meant that of literally the food, folks. I'm not sure. Oh, no, I got it. your mind out of the gutter, Mike. <laughs> cool. Folks, it's been a really good show. I know we're going to get cut off soon. Spencer, take it away as you need it. I've had a lot of fun. I learned quite a bit. Uh, my small cap or my penny stock, I got a lot of work to do. My large cap, my Deutsche Bank is going to be, I think, in smooth sailing. My biotech, I'm continuing to be screwed, but I'll work with that. That's not that big of a deal. Um, man, I hope everybody has a great fourth. I hope to see even back sooner than later. I hope he's doing much better, doing well. And right on, I hope we have a great time. Check out uh, Power Hour today. For a little patriotic send off into the weekend okay everybody hope you have a great one we'll take it easy see you later i'm gonna jump to joseph team have a great weekend i don't get to see you soon and i hope a few of you do get to make it out to detroit soon so we can meet in person and have a great time have a little drink and talk some stocks all right hope you take it easy have a great weekend see you, everyone happy fourth happy fourth right on